Welcome everyone to the session of Digital Marketing for Exporters. I am Dr. Ankit Keshavani, faculty at Indian Institute of Foreign Trade at Delhi campus. So in the coming few minutes we will discuss about how digital marketing practices can help the exporter to achieve their international business performance. So if we compare the traditional marketing and the digital marketing we will see that there is a fundamental difference in terms of the platform. For example, if you want to approach your client overseas in the overseas market, had not been the digital market, then you need to send them a brochure that you are not sure of whether the your client or the exporter has received the document or not. But where is the digital marketing? You can just simply send them an email and by using one metric open rate in the email marketing you can simply know whether the email was opened or not if the person has liked the product whether the particular pdf document was opened or not to uh, so understand the whole ambit of the digital marketing and how it can facilitate the exporters we can summarize all the points in of a b c d and e of digital marketing where is a is any place b is branding C is conversation, D is discovery of price, and E is experience. So before we go into the actual digital marketing process, let's understand what is the A, B, C, D, and E of digital marketing. Any place. Now, your exporter can be sitting anywhere in the world. They might be ordering from a country X, but they want you to deliver the product in a country Y. And this is what is all about the international business, international marketing we are discussing about. Digital marketing actually quite suited for such requirement. B. Branding. Now since the geographical boundary has been removed, now you have also make yourself open to the different competition by the diff from the different part of the world. So, and this is where the branding is acquired. This is where in the digital marketing we will discuss about the paid search ads or the social media marketing, the social media engagement, content marketing. Third is the C. Typically in a marketing, we occasionally discuss about the communication, but in digital marketing is not the communication, it's the conversation. Means engaging your client or the buyer in a two-way communication so that a better understanding and the trust can be developed for the future decision making purpose and the business objectives can be achieved. D is discovery of price. Now, it's not like the earlier days where you are sending the seal bed in product specification and the price. Now, many of the B2B or clients might not be even aware of the product specification and the price. Now, the first thing what they do, they Google it. They search on a different website. So how can you beat those particular aspects and this is something what we are also going to discuss in our today's session. Fifth is experience. Now keeping everything constant. You might be having the H2S, the one of the best client in the world. But customer, your client might not be giving the order to you. The reasons could be simply that the overall experience when they are interacting with your website, the way you are shipping your product, the way your customer call center people are giving the query to your customer might not give it, be giving them a happy feeling at the end. So this is what we are going to discuss in the coming sessions. And for this purpose, we have devised the 10 step process for the digital marketing success blueprint. So let's start the digital marketing success blueprint. So starting with the first point, the creation of the web page website or your mobile app the first step should be to set up the, their virtual presence in virtual world customers cannot find you if you have not set up your website or mobile apps website and mobile apps are typically the first interface of the customer with the firm so it is always advisable that website and apps should be professionally developed secured easy to navigate and regularly updated to win the trust of the first time visitors, all required country specific certification by protection policies must be available on the home page of the website. If dealing with customers from different countries or location, it is as advisable to have country specific website 
in local language and other relevant local business information. A well-designed website and mobile apps leaves an everlasting impression on the customer mind and increases the likelihood of meeting subsequent business goals. The second step is to list the business in the search directory. Once your business presence is virtually ready to make to have business, make sure all search engines business listing, for example, Google My Business, Bing Places for Business, AOL Business, etc., and marketplace directories, for example, Alibaba, India Mart, eWord Trade, etc., do show your business entity as a result of search efforts of the potential customer. It is essential as these search directories are typically the starting point in almost all B2B or bulk purchase behavioral scenario. If your client belongs to different countries, you need to learn about the most popular search directories including the marketplace player in that country and complete all the registration formalities to make sure that your business is listed in every possible trade directories they might look for to complete their business needs. Third, unlike traditional marketing approaches where it is usually expensive as well as time consuming to collect the consumer details, digital marketing provides a plethora of options to record and track unique customer visits for desired marketing purpose. These web analytics tools never collect any personal information of the customer, rather through behavioral targeting, it monitors browsing behavior of the customer. Based on these tracking of the customer browsing behavior, the web analytics tools calculate several metrics which are giving the firm an insight about effectiveness of the existing marketing program. Following are the few most widely used KPIs used by the digital marketer. So if you are looking at these KPIs, yes, quite often business spends their valuable resources in measuring and tracking the metrics which looks satisfying on paper but fails to uplift the top level business goals. These metrics are termed as vanity metrics and businesses should not focus on them too much. On the other hand, several metrics have strategic importance and drive many of the marketing decisions. The marketer should closely monitor the performance of these matrices for better business output. So if we look at the email metrics, we find that bounce rates, sharing stats, open rates and deliverability are the vanity metrics. If you look at the definition and the number of these metrics, actually they are not related with any of the financial performance of the business. Rather, the marketer should focus on how much the lead has been generated, what is the click-through rate of the email marketing, whether the email sent to the customer has been actually opened or not, how much cost per lead, whether the email marketing is providing a better lead generation platform or the marketer should look for the other alternatives, and ultimately what is the lead quality. So like this, here are the following the few metrics that a marketer should not only delish but also categorize them as the vanity and the better metrics. For a long-term decision-making purpose, it is always recommended that a better metric should be the core thirst area of the measurement. So once our web analytics tools have been integrated, now we will go to the search engine performance. It has been observed that if any web page listing on the search engine typically is not available on the first page, then the chances of getting website visits are as low as 1%. Within the first page, if your listing comes at a lower half of the search engine result page, the chances of getting website visit is even less than 20% as compared to 80% if you have been listed as top 3 to 5 web pages on the search engine result page. So it becomes important requirement for the businesses to understand how search engine ranking works. What are the changes required in the business website to attain the top ranking on the search engine? This task involves various on-page and off-page strategies to increase the visibility and ranking of the company web page on the search engine result page. So typically we categorize them into the on-the-page SEO strategy and the off-the-page SEO strategy. On-page SEO strategy refers to the set of the activities which needs to be done with respect to the website designing and web content restructuring. Whereas off-page optimization strategy refers to the set of the activities which needs to be done outside the website interface. 
So following figure 2 highlights some of the backpack stresses of the on-page and off-page optimization strategies. Here we need to keep in our mind that not all search engines have equally programmed. The algorithm of the search engines are country specific. For example, the search engine algorithm for Google in USA is not same as the search engine algorithm of the Google in UK. So here the marketers need to keep in mind that all the search engine optimization efforts needs to be country specific. So as customers across the countries have different bank preferences and patterns, businesses should experiment with their keyword research in particular. Different keywords may often have different meaning and interpretation across the countries and regions. Some countries customer might more concern about delivery time, while other countries customer might search more about the return policy or payment related tax structure. As search behavior is a function of many factors other than product related, business houses should understand it and maintain the country specific keyword basket. Google Keyword Planner, Answer the Public, Google Trend, Google Autofill are the few such tools which gives you a fair idea about the search terms being used by the target country customer. Once website is optimized to the search engine requirement, then business should strive to maintain their top position. As almost all the search engines reserve the top 2 to 3 positions for their paid search, to optimize its SEO effort, the firm should also create paid search advertisement campaigns to the advertising services of the search engine. As firms may have set a different objectives to meet, it is recommended to create separate campaign for better targeting and monitoring. For example, if your campaign is to create and have promotion to have more distributors in the target market, then you should be tracking the number of forms submitted via become a distributor page. Whereas if you want to pursue a specific target segment, you can create a campaign to show target specific product advertisement to the targeted audience with exclusive offers customized for that particular segment. In the far last few years, many buyers prefer e-brochures and email quotes for their business decision making. And this is what our next step the email marketing. As against most of the touch points discussed above have mass appeal, email marketing is a powerful tool to communicate with your targeted and personalized contents. It is recommended that first email to your customer should always carry the brief profile of your company, the core competency of your company and how doing business with you can bring competitive advantage to the target firm. To boost us, also highlight the achievements of the company and trial or return policy of the firm. With the help of marketing automation, you can now even send them the customized quotations and reminders based on the stages they are in. For example, if a customer has visited your website, they have sent you a request for a quotation then email marketing can allow you to send them a subsequent mail just to remind them about what they what is the customer thoughts and do they need any additional information as compared to the customer those who have just visited the website and sign up for the newsletter because someone those who have just signed up for the newsletter they would be receiving the welcome email with the product range or the brochures that you have to share with them next Step is content marketing. As digital marketing provides an opportunity to interact with the client or customer directly, marketers should not miss this opportunity to establish everlasting relationship with the customer through novel and engaging content to its various business stakeholders. The marketer should utilize blogs, social network sites, and other content management platforms to increase the brand image and recognition among network of stakeholders. The need for an effective content marketing is as important as the second wheel of the bicycle. Like we can't ride a bicycle with one wheel, similarly you can't even imagine a successful marketing plan without the content marketing initiative at place. By sharing the relevant content, you can easily establish the brand name as expert and authentic source of information. 
if rightly executed over a period these content marketing strategies have the potential to become the great source of website traffic with high conversion rates next is social media marketing in this connected world one of the most underrated media channel not being given its due attention is social media marketing as social media are becoming mainstream and majority of the business houses are stressing on their brand engagement it becomes imperative for businesses to capitalize on these platform as well facebook and linkedin both are industry leaders with about 90% buyers having at least one social media account like content marketing sharing relevant and engaging content helps the marketer to get higher share of mind which eventually can lead to a higher share of wallet as per industry report for the firms actively engaged in social media about 26% of their web traffic is coming via social media interactions next step is monitor the website traffic performance the businesses can reach to its customer at variety of the ways okay, as we have discussed above all the media vehicle can be categorized into four media vehicle own media paid media shared media and earned media as can be understand from the following figure see that each of these media options have differential impact on different stakeholders and customer segment so it becomes very essential for businesses to keep track of all the communications being tailored to each of these specific customer segment and monitor their reaction to specific metric and KPIs a continuous measurement always keeps the businesses in check with all the latest reactions of the segment and help helps to establish the balance across the numerous media vehicle while keeping the marketing objective in focus own media is just any type of the content that you create and own yourself that's on your website and any sort of assets or location that you own as a company own media include blog post websites videos images infographics podcast ebooks white papers and guides basically if you have created it in house you and you own it's considered as own media the great thing about own media is that you own it that means you have control over it with every other type of media that we talk about you have less control over it own media can also include assets that you hire people to make for you for example you might not have the resources for the in house video content creation so you might hire a freelancer as long as it's written into contract that you will own the finished video that will be classified as own media paid media is content you have to pay to place and promote you have heavy influence over the content but your control will be limited by the rules of the host or the publication or the domain owner the benefit of them is that you can reach an audience that is much more difficult to or might take a lot of time to reach to own methods so you can go out and just place your content in front of them by paying for it paid media includes search ads paid ads for the social media affiliate marketing program advertorials and any sort of the sponsored content that gives you exposure to the wider audience a downside of paid media is the lack of longevity once you stop paying for it the effectiveness and the availability of the media vehicle decreases shared media is a content that shared across social media or shared between multiple owners since typically social media platforms like facebook youtube linkedin etc are neither owned by the firm nor by the customer it termed as shared media it includes social media content user generated content co-created partner material etc in layman's terms when you like a comment on a brand's status on a facebook page a physical record of your action will now exist on both the brand's page and your personal profile the brand does not exclusively own the content nor do you the content is partially owned by the brand and the partially owned by you that's why we call it a shared media the downside of shared media is that you have no control over the reach of the shared content if someone makes a meme mocking your product you can't stop it by going viral 
you can't also control whether or not the positive interactions you have with your fans will go viral. Earn media is content created by someone else about your company that you did not pay for. Most of the other things are self-promotional. Earned is someone else talking about you on your behalf and people trust what other people are saying about you more than they trust what you say about yourself. Earned media includes backlinks, being featured in lists, press coverage, awards, reviews, etc. One of the most effective way to get earned media is to do something newsworthy and attract media attention. So all the media vehicles that we have discussed also have certain interactions. The four types of the media interactions that we discuss are the press releases for example are owned by the company but the same can be used as a paid source if the company wants to put it as on the media way. Reviews are earned media but when a company publish them on their website as the testimonial they become the own media. So using the all four media types can help the marketer to get the maximum reach at the lowest ROI. The last step is to make your customers your brand investor. A satisfied and loyal customer not only brings revenue to the organization but also shares positive word of mouth to advocate the brand among peer groups and social media platform. As customers have also become the integral part of the organizational strategies and influence various decision making criteria through timely feedback and brand and advocacy behavior. Nowadays many marketers have started to even quantify these aspects. Customer lifetime value and unified values are few such approaches to estimate the monetary as well as the non-monetary contributions made by customer towards the organization. Some non-monetary behaviors include the word of mouth, brand advocacy, referral marketing, user generated content, mystery buyers, opinion leaders, etc. By properly channelizing the satisfied and loyal customer groups, business can not only rely retain them for a longer period of time but also make them a brand ambassador of your business. Higher the proportion of the loyal customers or the brand ambassadors for your customer profile, the greater the chance that business is going to survive any crisis with ease. So by this we have come to an end of 10 steps of digital marketing success blueprint. I hope all of you have understood the essential or the integrity of these 10 steps. So let's have a quick recap. We started with this creation of the website or the mobile apps. Then we have discussed about the listing of our company or the firm in the our client countries directories, the digital marketing directory where they actually put the effort to find you. Then we have discussed about the importance of the different metrics because on and off we are having the multiple visitors coming to our website and we are not sure whether they are the actually liked our content, did not like our content and this is where the web metrics can actually help us to shortlist the customers with whom we have to take the further communication ahead. Then we have discussed about the search engine optimization and search engine marketing. These two steps have actually helped us to make sure that we are on the top first page whenever a customer make even a casual inquiry about the product that we are actually dealing with. So if someone search for the digital marketing, so I will make sure that my name is going there. Then sixth, we talk about the email marketing. Not always we talk to a customer on a public platform with the search engine, the, the directory, there are the others which can actually look into the kind of the conversation I am engaging with my client. But in email, email marketing is kind of more personalized in a way. So you can actually now negotiate with your customers and the customers are special offers that you think that this customer is going to be a long term customer, exclusive offers are there. So just like we are having the scenario for the B2C, the same thing can be easily applied for your export business in the B2B context. Then we discuss about the importance of the content. Content is king in respect of the marketing campaign that we are talking about and that also true in the case of the digital marketing. 
since the customer is not having face to face contact all our platforms are virtual in nature we actually have to rely on the some good quality content and that is why i say that it's a kind of the two wheel of a bicycle your marketing tools could be very good you might be having one of the start state of the art web analytics at a place but you might be missing on the engaging content your customer might not be even feel like to open the email so if they don't feel like opening the email nothing can be measured and nothing can be worked upon so that is why the content marketing we have discussed then we have discussed about the social media marketing and when you say social media marketing is all about engagement never try to use a social media platform as your website there is a difference between when the customer talks to you on a social media platform when they interact with you on a social media platform they follow your brand page on a social media platform it's not the same intent that they are visiting your website social media marketing is all about the engaging make sure that you are sharing the content what the customer likes not the content that you want to force on them because they have to like the content and if only they like the content the content can be viral and then only the objective of the social media engagement can be achieved the purpose of the social media engagement is not to make sales but to always be in the top of the mind of the customer so that whenever they think of a particular product category your company name comes by default then we have discussed about the integration of the analytics so that we can make sure that whatever the mode of the communication we are having with the customer across the channels because we have discussed the different variety of the channels customers can come to your website through the google search they can come to your website by directly typing your website name they can come to your website by having the affiliate marketing program because you have put the advertisement on other your partner website they can come to you through the social media engagement activities so how to make the integrated effort and take the things forward and this is what the nine effort not only that since that we are sending the message and message we are not trying to reconcile all the efforts so ninth in the ninth step all the efforts when we discuss about the earned media paid media shared media and own media the purpose is that all the interface all the touch points have consensus in nature there should not be any conflicting information there should not be too much repetition of the information so that the customer at the end feel bombarded with the information overload and then tenth at a last do not treat your customer as the client try to go one step beyond and try to make them your brand ambassador would not you like that your customer talks about your brand when they are sitting in their business meeting because you are not physically there so for example they are representing your brand in a trade meeting their trade association they are having a round table meeting and then suddenly they appreciate your company performance so they are like that kind of the crm effort so that the longevity of the customer can also retain even beyond the sales performance and that is what is the film marketing for example so where the customer is not only having a business with you they are also bringing few customers on the board and that can only happen when they have a full trust with you so i hope that you all are clear with the 10 steps that we have discussed so if you have any query or concern you can send us an email and we'll be happy to get back to you with the solution thank you